ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Vice President Vic Gundotra. Well, hello, everybody. Hello. On behalf of Google, let me extend our warmest welcome to all of you. To the over 6,000 people here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco, welcome. And to our Google I.O. viewing parties that are happening all around the world, over 350 different parties with over 30,000 in attendance, welcome. And finally, let me also welcome the over 1 million people who will be watching this event live streamed on YouTube. Welcome to Google I.O. You know, this is our fifth year, and we're going to make this Google I.O. incredibly special. Our teams have worked very hard to put on something really great for you, and we still have some surprises left. At the end of the day, however, it's not just about the hard work our teams have done. This conference is really about you, developers. When you think back over the last five years, things like Google Chrome or Android were in their infancy. We owe in no small measure the success of our efforts due to your support. Thank you. Thank you for betting with Google, and thank you for supporting us. Thank you for spending three days of your life here at the Google I.O. conference. We hope you're going to absolutely love it. Now, one small favor to ask, please. If you have a hotspot, please turn the hotspot off, as it's going to greatly increase our chances of having a successful set of demos. OK, with that, let's get this started. Please join me in welcoming Director of Android Product Management, Hugo Barra. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Android keynote at I.O. 2012. Last year on this stage, we talked about momentum, mobile, and more. Momentum, accelerating of Android across the world. Mobile, everything we're doing to innovate on smartphones and tablets. And more, extending the Android ecosystem well beyond the typical mobile device. This year, we're continuing with the same three themes and picking up right where we left off. Let's start with momentum. Last year, right here, we announced that Android had crossed the mark of 100 million devices. 100 million was a huge milestone for us back then. It's been a pretty busy year, and I'm thrilled to announce our latest milestone. You ready? 400 million Android devices. Four hundred million is a pretty huge number, uh, but we're definitely not slowing down. Last year, right here, uh, we announced that we were seeing four hundred thousand new Android devices activated every day. Well, today, one million new Android devices are activated every single day. That's about twelve new Android devices every second of every day. Thank you. <laughs> more devices in the hands of more people and a truly global phenomenon. Take a look at this chart. Uh, what you see here is a heat map representation of the growth in Android devices throughout the world over the last uh, year. Uh, places like Japan, South Korea, and France grew between 2 and 300% in these 12 months. But what's even more impressive is that the developing world is adopting Android at an even faster pace. Very large markets like Brazil, India, Thailand, and Indonesia all grew around 500% over the last year alone. Really, really exciting. And we're continuing to build and innovate just as fast in the Android team. Today, we want to share with you what we've been working on since we launched Ice Cream Sandwich late last year. 
I'd like to introduce you to our newest release. You guys ready for this? Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. <laughs> Jelly Bean builds upon what we created with Ice Cream Sandwich. We want things to be simple, beautiful, and really smart. There are a few things about Jelly Bean we wanted to cover today. Project Butter, a performance-focused effort that went deep into the guts of the platform. We'll then talk to you about a number of delightful improvements that we've made throughout the entire system. And finally, we'll show you the new Google search experience on Android. Thank you. To tell you, to tell you about Project Butter, please welcome Android Engineering Director Dave Burke. Thanks, Hugo. Our brain's visual cortex is especially sensitive to the physics of motion. It notices delays of as little as 10 milliseconds. So in Jelly Bean, we put a lot of effort into making the user interface fast, fluid, and smooth. This is the project that we call Project Butter. The first thing we did was improve the system frame rate and make it consistent. We took the display refresh signal called vSync and extended it to drive the entire Android framework at 60 frames per second. That's one heartbeat about every 16 milliseconds. And now everything runs in lockstep. Application rendering, touchscreen processing, screen composition, and display refresh. In Jelly Bean, we also introduced triple buffering in the graphics pipeline. And this allows the GPU, the CPU, and display to all run in parallel without waiting on each other. The result is a more consistent rendering framework, and everything feels a lot smoother. Scrolling, paging, animations, they're all buttery smooth. Next, we focus on improving touch experience by solving two problems. The first problem is that touch events are reported independently of screen update. In Jelly Bean, we now actually anticipate where your finger will be at the time of screen refresh and use that position to draw the display. This results in a more reactive and uniform touch response. The second problem relates to how devices conserve power. They actually dial the CPU back to a lower frequency when there's not much activity in the system. And if you interact with the system in that state, it can potentially take tens of milliseconds for the CPU to ramp up and respond. And this can lead to a sluggish UI. So in Jelly Bean, we introduced the concept of touch input boost. Now when you interact with the screen, we'll instantly ramp the CPU up. It's literally putting the full power of the CPU at your fingertips. Now, one of our goals when we started to work in Jelly Bean was to be able to measure and improve interactive performance in a scientific way. So we created a new tool called SysTrace. And SysTrace collects data directly from the Linux kernel and uses that to produce an overall picture of what the system is doing. The data is represented as a group of vertically stacked time series graphs. And in this particular application example, you can see that there's a rendering interruption that's much longer than 16 milliseconds. And this results in drop frames. When you look at the data, it's pretty easy to correlate that with the database interruption here. So you know what to fix. SysTrace comes with the Jelly Bean SDK, and it's a really useful tool for device manufacturers and for you guys to optimize the performance of your application. So how noticeable are these changes in practice? Well, we got out a high-speed camera to compare a stock device running Ice Cream Sandwich against a device running the latest Jelly Bean. Let's take a look. So this is a really sophisticated camera capable of capturing 4 million pixels at a rate of up to 300 frames per second. Device on the left is running Ice Cream Sandwich. Device on the right, Jelly Bean. So let's take a look at the launcher animation. So the Jelly Bean device has a much higher frame rate. It feels a lot smoother. Let's take a look at another example. Let's look at the quick contacts animation. And again, the Jelly Bean device on the right, it animates much more smoothly and much more consistently. And it just feels much more silkily smooth. And, and that's the triple buffering and vSync in action. So, 
So these, these improvements apply across the whole system, and they apply to all applications. And it's something that we're going to continue to improve on in future Android releases. If you want to learn more about this, we've got a really good session tomorrow called For Butter or Worse. Uh, <laughs> and to butter you up even further, let me pass you back to Hugo. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Well, Jelly Bean is not only the fastest and smoothest uh, version of Android yet, but we've also made a ton of improvements throughout. We've touched every corner of Android, and it all comes together in a way that's really delightful. So let's jump right in. Um, I have Randall here from the Android product team to help me with demos. And first of all, we sp people spend a lot of time on the home screen in Android because we've always let you customize it the way you want with apps and widgets. But when you've got a lot of stuff on your home screen, adding another widget or getting things to fit just right can be a little bit difficult. So we solved that problem in Jelly Bean. Let's go to the device. So um, here's a uh, home screen with a bunch of apps. Now, Randall's going to pick up a widget from another home screen and move it to this one. Now watch what happens. Everything gets out of the way and aligns perfectly around the widget. But what if the widget is too big and there isn't enough room for it on the home screen? Well, here's another home screen that has even more apps. Watch what happens now when Randall moves that widget to this screen. It magically resizes on its own. And if you want to do some spring cleaning in Jelly Bean, you can just pick up a widget and toss it off your with a familiar gesture. Uh, you can do the same thing with apps, um, as many as you want. And that's probably enough, Randall. Thanks. <laughs> OK, let's go back to slides. So we also made uh, text input on Android a whole lot better. In Jelly Bean, we refined and retuned our dictionaries. They're much more accurate, more relevant, and the keyboard learns intelligently over time. We've also added a bigram prediction algorithm, which guesses the next word you're going to type before you start typing it. It's really cool stuff. But sometimes your hands aren't free to type, which is why Android supports voice typing. Now, while voice typing works really well when you have a data connection, if you don't have one, it doesn't work. And it can actually be slow if you have a bad connection. So in Jelly Bean, we shrunk the Google speech recognizer that runs in our data centers to fit. We shrunk the Google speech recognizer to fit on the device itself. So if you have a poor connection, uh, or if you're or offline, you can still type with your voice. Uh, why don't we go to the device? Let's show you that live. Um, so Randall's going to put his phone in airplane mode, and he's going to use his voice to write an email. Uh, now, watch, watch what happens, and do listen carefully, because this is one of the few times when we let him speak. <laughs> this is a demonstration of voice typing, period. Words appear even though I don't have a connection, period. There you go. All right, uh, let's go back to the slides. Uh, we're launching offline voice typing initially for US English, and we're going to add more languages uh, pretty soon. Now, we also wanted to make sure that Android works well for everyone, particularly given how quickly Android is growing around the world, like I showed you earlier. So in Jelly Bean, if we could go back a couple slides, please. Um, so in Jelly Bean, we've improved support for uh, Arabic and Hebrew. Uh, we've added a new Arabic font to the platform, and we're also adding 18 new input languages, including Persian, Hindi, and Thai. OK, um, let's go to the next slide now. There you go. <laughs> Making sure Android works for everyone also means improving accessibility. With Jelly Bean, we're introducing Gesture Mode, which enables blind users to reliably navigate the UI using touch and swipe gestures in combination with speech output. It's really, really awesome. 
Thank you. We've also added platform support for external Braille input and output devices via Bluetooth. And if you want to learn more about accessibility in Android, uh, stop by the sandbox just outside to see some awesome Android devices with integrated Braille support. So that's accessibility. Now, let's talk about camera. Um, in Ice Cream Sandwich, uh, uh, well, Ice Cream Sandwich made it possible to snap photos really quickly. The Jelly Bean Camera app makes it possible to review photos you've already taken really, really quickly as well. Uh, let's show that light. Let's go to the device. So uh, Rando is snapping some photos here. And um, you'll notice that there's a new animation of the photo flying out to the right. So that tells you with a simple wipe, you can bring it back into view uh, and look at the photo you just took. Uh, thank you. From here, you can uh, tap and share this photo, as you know. Uh, or you can keep swiping to look at the other photos you took. If you want to go through these photos really quickly, just pinch to go to film strip view. And then you can scroll much faster from here. And if you don't like a photo, you can easily get rid of it by just swiping it away. Pretty cool, right? And if you delete a photo by accident, you can always tap undo and bring it right back. So that's camera. Pretty cool. In Ice Cream Sandwich, we introduced Android Beam which lets you share things like web pages, um, contacts, uh, maps, and so on, between devices using NFC by just tapping them together. Today, more than a million NFC-enabled Android devices are shipping every single week, and that number is growing quickly. In Jelly Bean, we're introducing two new Android Beam features. First, you can send someone a photo or video by just tapping your phones together, and second, you can instantly pair and connect your phone with an NFC-enabled Bluetooth device, like a speaker uh, or a headset, by just tapping it with your phone. It takes one second. Absolutely brilliant. Let's keep going. Thank you. One of the signature features of Android is notifications. Android notifications are great. They show you what's important. They never get in your way. And they're accessible from anywhere. In Jelly Bean, notifications show you more information. They're actionable. They expand and collapse. They have full bleed photos. They're beautiful. And they're customizable. So you guys can build amazing notifications into your apps. I really want to show you this. Let's go to the device. So here at the top, there's a missed call from Hiroshi. Rather than opening the phone app and calling him back, you can do that right from the notification itself. Just tap on callback. It's really quick and easy. Now, if you leave the phone app while you're in this call, when you're done, you can just go back to notifications and hang up straight from there. It's awesome. Now, the Gmail notification moves up and automatically expands. You no longer need to open the Gmail app at all to see what's going on in your inbox. It's all right there. Um, nothing important right now, so Randa, why don't we just swipe that away? OK. Now, here's a calendar notification. And you can see that there's a meeting here at 10.30. Now, if you're running late or you can't make it to the meeting, you can easily email everyone in the meeting and let them know. Just type email guests. And because you'll usually be in a rush when you do this, we give you a set of canned responses. You can choose any of these or, of course, write your own. Thank you. Let's go back to notifications. All right, so we can see that Romain shared a photo on Google+. Now, you can actually see the full bleed photo right here in notifications. And you can plus one it or even share it right into your circles all without opening the app. Here's a notification from Foursquare. You can quickly like or comment on a friend's check-in, again, without having to open the app. This is TuneIn Radio. It's a great Android app for listening to radio stations from around the world. When I have a song playing, I can see this beautiful album art. I can control my music, and I can actually quickly favorite a song from here without opening the app. Now, let me also show you a quick trick. Notifications expand on their own as they bubble up to the top, as you've been seeing so far. But you can also make them expand or collapse whenever you want with a simple 
two finger gesture. Watch this. In the expanded uh, Pulse News notification here, I can see news stories complete with photos and headlines. Really, really powerful stuff. Uh, so those are Jelly Bean notifications. They expand and they collapse when you need them. They're actionable, and they can show you a ton of new information. And just like an ice cream sandwich, you can dismiss all notifications at once with one simple tap. Android makes your life easier. Simple tasks should never require complex procedures. Now, let's talk about search. From the very beginning, Android had search at its core. With Jelly Bean, we took a hard look at search and redesigned it from the ground up. First, a new UI. Second, faster and more natural voice search. And third, a new feature we're calling Google Now. Let's start with a new UI. Last month, we introduced the knowledge graph in Google Search. The goal is for Google to understand that the words you use when you're searching are not just words, but real things in the real world. In Jelly Bean, we're using the power of the knowledge graph to show you search results in a new, richer way. For example, if you want to know what movies Angelina Jolie has starred in, we'll show you this card. Or if you ask how much the Earth weighs, you'll see an answer like this. If you're searching for the weather in New York, we'll show you a card with the weekly forecast. If you want to find a nearby Starbucks, we'll show you a card with a quick map of some stores close to you and a shortcut to take you to Google Maps. Now, let's show you what we've done with voice search. You know, sometimes you'd rather just speak your search query or ask a question. In Jelly Bean, voice search is much faster. It's also better at understanding natural language, and it speaks answers back to you using the power of the knowledge graph. Uh, let's go to the device and show you this live. Randall, um, why don't you show us a few more examples? You can talk. <laughs> OK, uh, I'm going to ask a few questions, and uh, Google will respond. Who is the Prime Minister of Japan? The Prime Minister of Japan is Yoshihiko Noda. All right. Try we'll, more? We'll try another one. What is the definition of robot? Robot, a machine capable of carrying out a complex series of actions automatically. It's pretty appropriate. Okay. Try another. How tall is the Space Needle? Space Needle is 604 feet tall. OK, we'll give it one more try. Show me pictures of pygmy marmosets. OK. <laughs> That's great. Now, notice that um, if you go back to the results, if you swipe away that card, there's a wealth of additional information from the web on pygmy marmosets, which uh, as I'm sure you know, are the smallest monkeys in the world. Uh, Google will always give you web search results for all of your questions. Thanks, Randall. Let's go back to slides. Thank you. Now, the third part of the new Android search experience is called Google Now. Today, smartphones are powerful. They can do pretty much anything you ask. Search the web give you directions, traffic info, anything. But smartphones are only as smart as you tell them to be. They rely on you to do everything. You have to enter a search query, you have to type in a street address, and you have to ask for a traffic in a particular area. But with Google Now, that starts to change. Google Now gets you just the right information at just the right time. And all of it happens automatically. So how do we do this? Well, if you choose to, Google now uses things like your search history, your location history, and your calendar to figure out what information you might need and when. Uh, let's see a few examples on slides. Traffic. Google now figures out when you, com when you commute from home to work and back. It'll then tell you how long the commute on your usual route is going to be 
and it'll give you a faster route if there's a lot of traffic. Next, public transit. When you're near a bus stop or on a platform at a subway station, Google now tells you when the next bus or train will arrive. <laughs> places. Google now will show you bars, restaurants, and places of interest around you as you walk down the street. And when you're in a restaurant trying to figure out what to order, Google now will tell you what's, what that restaurant is best known for. Next, appointment. When you have a calendar event, Google now will help you get there on time. For example, if you normally take the bus to get around, Google now will tell you when to leave based on how long it'll take you to walk to the bus stop, when the next bus arrives, and how long that bus ride will take. So we get there on time. <laughs> Flights. If you have an upcoming flight that you've searched for, Google now keeps you up to date on the status. It tells you which terminal to go to, and it updates you if there's a delay, all automatically. Sports. Google now keeps you updated on your favorite sports teams in real time. You'll see scores and upcoming games. And the best part is you don't need to set up your favorite teams. You've already done that by searching for them on Google. Travel. Google now knows when you're traveling. And if you're traveling internationally, Google now will give you interactive cards for currency conversion and translation. It also conveniently tells you what time it is back home. And there's tons more. Uh, I'd like to welcome on stage uh, Barish Gultekin, Google Now Product Manager. Barish is going to show you how Google Now helps him navigate his day. Barish. Thank you, Higa. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to show you how Google Now can do work for me. So let's get started. The easiest way to get to Google Now, there are two ways. You can either tap on the search box, or you can simply swipe up from the bottom of the screen. And when you do that, you see the familiar Google search box. You also see a beautiful header that changes based on your time and location. Um, you also see the Google Now cards beneath it. Let's start with the first one. Google Now is telling me that I have a meeting at 10.30 AM today. It's also telling me that this meeting is 16 minutes away from where I am. Google Now also notifies me when it's time to leave so I'm not late for my meeting. Here, it tells me that I need to leave by 10.14. All right. Google Now knows that I'm a Giants fan. And right now, it's telling me that there's a Giants game coming up in a few hours. And this card is going to keep me updated uh, with the scores, and I, I know what's happening in real time. If I wanted to, I can buy tickets from here really easily. All right, let's think about uh, when you want to uh, figure out a place to get lunch. Google now knows that I'm not here too often, and I don't know the area too well. So it's showing me a few places nearby, including some restaurants. Let's take a look. Um, zero, zero looks pretty good, so I'm going to tap on it and get more details. This takes me to Google Maps, and from here, I can get wealth of information. I can also book a table if I want it. Cool. Let's go back. And Google now has also figured out that I go to the gym usually uh, around lunchtime, and it's telling me that the gym is 29 minutes away. So I want to get a workout, but I was going to take a flight. And it looks like my flight is delayed, so I have enough time to actually go and squeeze in a workout. Google Now is also telling me that my flight is delayed, and I'm only 19 minutes away from the airport. It's also telling me that when I get to the airport, I'm going to go to Terminal 2. Well, that's a quick demo of what Google, got, can, now, can, Google now can do for me today. Your carts will get smarter and more accurate as you use them. And we're just beginning. We'll be adding more cards over time. Thank you. Back to you. Thanks, Barish. That was great. So that was an overview of Jellybean for you guys. Project Butter, a bunch of delightful improvements like easier home screen organization, offline voice typing, a new camera app, and awesome expandable notifications. Lastly, you got a preview of the new Google search experience on Android. Can't wait for you 
guys to actually try that. Uh, now, I'm sure you all want to know when you can get your hands on Jelly Bean. We're going to roll out over-the-air updates to Galaxy Nexus, Motorola Zoom, and Nexus S, and also release Jelly Bean to open source starting in mid-July. Thank you. But we're making the SDK available to you today as a developer preview. You can download it right now from developer.android.com, Jelly Bean SDK developer preview. The SDK is built for you guys, Android app developers. But as you know, chipset vendors and device manufacturers develop for Android too to bring us their awesome hardware. So today we're announcing the Android Platform Development Kit, or PDK for short, which is like the SDK, but for Android hardware developers. It contains the necessary source code and low-level API documentation required to port Android to your hardware if you are a hardware developer. PDK will be available, thank you. PDK will be available to Android device partners two to three months before the platform release date of all future Android versions. Thanks. And we've actually started with this release. A beta version of the Jelly Bean PDK has already been available to a few partners for the last few weeks, and they've been providing us valuable feedback. We've incorporated that feedback, and now it's available to everyone on an ongoing basis. PDK enables Android OEMs and chipset makers to innovate in parallel with Google and ensure the latest Android release can be well optimized for their hardware. So that's what we're doing on the platform side. To tell you about what we've been doing on Google Play, here's Android Engineering Director Chris Yerga, fresh out of the salon. <laughs> Thank you, Hugo. Those hair jokes never get old. Um, so this past March, we announced Google Play, your digital entertainment destination, not just for apps and games, but also for movies, music, and books. Google Play is entirely cloud-based, which means that all of your content is always available across all of your devices. And Google Play is Android apps, lots of apps. Today, there are more than 600,000 apps and games in Google Play. And we're seeing more than 1.5 billion installs every single month. And we've just reached a total of 20 billion app installs across Google Play. It's incredible. It's billion with a B. And there's no way we could have done that without the support of everybody in this room. Developers are the lifeblood of our ecosystem. So thanks for all your hard work and support in achieving this amazing milestone. Now. Uh, over the past year, we've launched a number of features to support you as developers and help you build your business. Uh, Android apps are available in 190 countries across the globe, and paid apps are available in 132 of those countries. Uh, you have flexible ways to monetize your apps. Um, you can use an ad-supported model, paid applications, uh, and in-app billing, which you have embraced very successfully. Uh, just a year after the launch of in-app billing, more than 50% of our apps revenue now comes from in-app billing. And so we wanted to keep that momentum going. With the recent launch of subscription billing for applications, we now enable you even more ways to monetize your Android apps on Google Play. We're also giving users more ways to pay for your apps. We've expanded carrier billing to a dozen additional countries, uh, carriers rather, across five different countries. And we're continuing that momentum by adding new partners. We've also given you insight into your business with additional metrics in the Google Play Developer Console, easier ways to distribute your apps with APK expansion files, and ways to connect with users with the ability to reply to reviews. And for aspiring new developers out there, we've launched Android Training, a collection of free online classes to help you learn best practices. And today, we're announcing several new fe features for developers as part of Google Play. So first, we know that you spend a lot of time and money writing great apps. And so we're constantly at work trying to help you protect your investments. We're introducing app encryption in Jelly Bean. From Jelly Bean forward, that's fine. You can love it. Come on. 
From Jelly Bean forward, paid apps in Google Play are encrypted with a device-specific key, uh, both before they're delivered to the device and stored on the device. Uh, we're also announcing smart app updates. So today, when you update an app, uh, your users have to download the entire APK again. Uh, you know, clearly this wastes bandwidth and battery life, and we could do better than that. With smart app updates, users will only download the parts of the APK that have changed. Uh, we looked at some of the most <laughs> I've read through this stuff so many times, I don't know like, what parts are going to be exciting to you. But that, <laughs> the team is very excited about this as well. Um, and on average, across the, the most popular apps we looked at, uh, a smart APK update is about a third the size of a full update. So it's going to be much easier for you to have your users on the latest version. It's a win for carriers, developers, and users. And uh, the best news about it is we handle it automatically for you. You don't need to do anything, and it's supported on Gingerbread and above. So for a couple years now, uh, we've offered developers a service we call Android Cloud to Device Messaging, uh, which lets you send data to apps while they're running in the background without having to implement your own sync solution. Uh, it's been amazingly successful with the developer community. Uh, we deliver billions of C2DM messages every single day. Now we're ready to take C2DM to the next level. And we're announcing Google Cloud Messaging, which adds great new features like message multicasting, message payloads, and more. But I think the best feature, hopefully you all agree, is that Google Cloud Messaging is completely free for all developers, and there are no quota limitations. Uh, if you want to learn more, we're going to have a special session on this uh, tomorrow on Google Cloud Messaging. I would urge you to attend. So lots of exciting developer announcements, but Google Play is also about great digital content, movies, music, and books. Google Play has thousands of movies to rent. You can watch new releases, blockbuster films, and your favorite classics on your Android phone, tablet, or even on the web. Google Play also has millions of songs from your favorite artists, whether it's an indie band, rock legend, uh, hip hop stars, and everyone in between. And you can also bring all the songs you already own to Google Play and store up to 20,000 of them for free in our music library, so you can listen to them anywhere as well. And finally, Google Play is also the world's largest ebook collection with more than 4 million titles available. And all of this content is stored in the cloud, so it's available whenever you want, wherever you are. And today, we're bringing more content to Google Play. It starts with movie purchasing. Now, along with rentals, uh, your favorite movies are available for sale on Google Play, uh, which means that they'll be yours to watch as many times as you like. And we're also adding TV to the video experience. You'll be able to purchase episodes or entire seasons of your favorite TV shows. It's perfect for when you have a spare half hour or you're on the bus or something, and it really works well with a mobile device. All of this is launching today on Google Play, and we've partnered with some of the biggest names in the entertainment industry, including Disney, uh, ABC Studios, NBC Universal, Sony Pictures, and Paramount. Finally, magazines are coming to Google Play. We've partnered with top magazine publishers, including Hearst, uh, Condé Nast, and Meredith, so you can enjoy hundreds of titles right from your Android phone or tablet. This includes premium magazines like Esquire, Wired, and Family Circle. Buy single issues or a subscription. And we offer 14-day 14 free, 14 free trials on our most popular magazines to encourage you to try it out. We've got all this great content on Google Play. Music, movies, books, and now TV and magazines as well. You can enjoy it anywhere, on your phone, on the web, or on your tablet. And uh, speaking of tablets, I think Hugo has a few words to share. Thanks, Chris. Well, it's always been a goal of the Nexus program to provide you with the best of Google experience, access to the latest software coupled with an Android experience the way that Google envisions it. We wanted to take that model one step further. We wanted to design a best of Google experience that is optimized around all this great content available in Google Play. We wanted a device that lets you immerse yourself in all of that media. We wanted you to be delighted when you read books, magazines, watch movies, and play games. 
So we partnered with a great company, Asus, to help us build just that device. And, and today, we're introducing Nexus 7. It's a beautiful 7-inch tablet. It's built, thank you. It's built for Google Play. It's running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. And here it is, Nexus 7. And by the way, we're really pleased to have uh, Johnny Shi, the chairman of Asus, uh, here in the audience today. Johnny, please stand up. Thank you. So let me tell you a bit about Nexus 7. It's super thin, light, and portable, and yet we've managed to pack a lot into this device. First of all, the display. 1280 by 800 HD display, which is perfect for reading and watching videos in stunning clarity. Performance. Tegra 3 chipset with a quad-core CPU and... <laughs> Wait, there's more. So Tegra 3 chipset with a quad-core CPU and a 12-core GPU. That's basically 16 cores, which makes, which makes everything, including games, extremely fast and smooth. Front-facing camera, perfect for Google Plus Hangouts and video chatting. All the connectivity options you'd expect, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and NFC. Gyroscope and accelerometer, essential for high-performance gaming. And battery, up to nine hours of video playback and up to 300 hours standby time. And best of all, it's only 340 grams, just about the weight of an average paper book. It fits perfectly in one hand. You can put it in a purse or bag. It doesn't tip over when you're reading or watching a movie in bed. It just feels right. That's Nexus 7. Music. <laughs> Music, movies, books, magazines, apps, and games. All the great content from Google Play right at your fingertips. Now, to show you Nexus 7 in action, here's Chris Yerga once again. Thanks, Hugo. We designed the Nexus 7 experience with three goals in mind. Create the best possible Google Play experience, make all your favorite Google apps work beautifully, and support the next generation of apps and games. Nexus 7 is made for Google Play. When you power it on, your content is front and center. Right here on the home screen is my library, containing the content I've recently been reading, listening to, or watching on any of my devices. So earlier, I was reading uh, The Born Dominion on my phone. So we can tap on the cover there and uh, pick up exactly where I left off on that other device. Uh, Nexus 7 is an ideal device for reading books. The form factor and the weight are just right. Uh, it has the portability of a paperback backed by a cloud-powered personal library of books. Now I'd like to show you the magazine experience on Nexus 7. Here's the uh, new Google Play Magazines app. And just like your coffee table, uh, the newest stuff is on top. You can swipe through and find something that's interesting to read. Why don't we uh, go ahead and uh, Esquire? And um, if I, uh, once, once I bring it up, um, I can tap on it and bring up a list of page thumbnails on the bottom to kind of quickly swipe through, find an article that I'm interested in reading. So yeah, that one looks good. And uh, once we open it up, you look at the content, it just looks beautiful on Nexus 7. But if I want to focus maybe on something that's a little bit more of a pure reading experience, I can tap on the, the view text link and get the contents of the article in a form that's optimized for that. Still looks beautiful on Google Play. <laughs> From here, I can also navigate and bring up a table of contents and quickly pull up any other article. So now let's uh, look at some interactive features. Uh, so why don't we uh, go to Shape Magazine. And here from the cover, since this is an interactive title, um, I can uh, tap on any of the uh, interesting articles there and uh, get to, uh, I think, 
he wants to work on his abs, so he's going to pick the flat abs. Um, so we've gone beyond print replica here and added interactive elements to custom fit the text to the device, keeping everything readable without impacting the design. Uh, Randall can drag up to expand the content right here on the page and even tap on the link to jump into an exercise routine and get further details on those all-important ab exercises that Randall likes to do, all without leaving the page. So that's our premium magazine reading experience on Google Play. Uh, Nexus 7 is also ideal for watching movies and TV wherever you are. Uh, long plane rides, road trips with the family, or just uh, sitting at home watching on the sofa. So let's open the Google Play Movies and TV app. And uh, here you see uh, all of your movies. We can swipe over to see uh, TV shows, and you can get to your personal videos as well. Uh, so why don't we pick something? Uh, astute observers will note that I'm a Parks and Recreation fan. So why don't we tap on uh, episode one there and start watching some TV? Who are the suits? They want me to run for office. Oh my god, Leslie, yay! I know, right? Yay! 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 yay. 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 Wait, what does that mean about you and Ben? I don't know. I think it's going to be really bad. Uh-oh. Do you want to go back to saying yay? Yes, please. Yay! Yay! yay. <laughs> Video looks stunning no, on Nexus 7. You can see the individual hairs on Ron Swanson's mustache. So uh, in here, you have access to the movies and episodes you purchased and links to the store for other episodes of the, the season. Uh, and you can, of course, also download your TV shows for offline use if you're going to be somewhere uh, without Wi-Fi, like on a plane. So that's finding content I already have. But what about discovering new content? With Nexus 7, we're introducing a powerful new recommendations engine for discovering content that's relevant to you. We present this information on beautiful and dynamic widgets on your home screen. Uh, here you can see that we've uh, set ours up for recommendations for apps, books, and movies, but you can customize it to show the content you're most interested in. And if you don't like a particular recommendation, just dismiss it and you'll get another. These widgets are intelligent, and they'll get smarter and more accurate the more you use them. Now, sometimes new content finds you. Maybe you hear a song you like on the radio or TV, but you don't exactly know what it is. We've added a What's This Song widget uh, you just tap on it, and it will identify the music playing and give you a link to the Play Store so you can buy it instantly. So the device is beautiful, but let's go back to the slides for a second. Uh, Nexus 7 is the perfect device to use all the Google applications you already know and love. Gmail on Nexus 7. It's a perfect size to read and respond to your emails. Chrome. Your favorite websites look beautiful on the HD display. And this is the first device that ships with Chrome as the standard browser. Uh, let's go back to the device and take a look at some of those apps. Uh, why don't we start with YouTube? Um, so the new YouTube app has a great tablet-optimized design. Uh, you got your channel feed uh, here on the left, and you can just uh, swipe over. Uh, why don't we uh, pick something here to watch and get some video going? You've got high-def YouTube right in the palm of your hand. It's the YouTube that you already know and love, but optimized for Nexus 7. Now, in addition to exploring a huge amount of videos online, you can also explore the world around you. So let's take a look at Google Maps. Now, in Google Maps, you can find your way around with the features you are already familiar with, like turn-by-turn -turn navigation, public transit, live traffic, and street view. But what about getting to know a place before you get there? Uh, I heard about a local bar called District, so let's go check it out. Um, we can tap here and get all this great information uh, about the restaurant, including Zagat reviews from Google Plus Local. And I can also scroll down and tap on See Inside. Once I do, uh, I'm inside the bar. I've got this nice view. And for an even better experience, I can turn on compass mode. So why don't you go ahead and do that, Randall? Now, we've had this feature for a little while, but what we've done in the latest version is hook it up to the gyroscope, which makes it incredibly smooth and fast and very responsive. Um, it's just like being there. Now, 
as we announced, we're also adding support for offline maps, so you can save the data for an entire city locally on the device and be able to use maps without a data connection. Simply tap on the menu. It's as easy as bringing up the menu and tapping Make Available Offline, and you're good to go. Um, so those features are all in the latest version of Google Maps shipping with Nexus 7. Now I want to talk to you about Google Currents. Currents brings you all the great content that the web has to offer in a mobile magazine format that looks incredible on Nexus 7. Um, my morning routine is I open up Currents first thing in the morning every day to check out the news. Um, subscribe to a number of feeds. You have trending stories here around the top. Um, but why don't we tap into the Daily Beast and uh, take a look at what articles are there. So here we have a list of recent articles we can swipe through and read. Uh, in a reading mode that's actually um, built on the same technology that the magazine's web view is, so it has that same beautiful look. Um, and you can see the content here is pulled straight from the web and beautifully formatted for Nexus 7. Now, behind all of this great content is the power of Google. So what we've done is we baked Google Translate right into Currents. So we can go to the menu, and I can translate everything into another language. And within a few seconds of doing that, um, Randall, I believe, picked Arabic. So we're going to see this entire edition translated into Arabic. <laughs> Currents is another Google app that works great on Nexus 7. With its quad-core CPU, gyroscope, and accelerometer, Nexus 7 is a serious gaming device. We'll start with the game Horn from Phosphor, Phosphor Games in Chicago. Horn is an epic adventure set in a richly detailed world with the kind of environment never before seen on a mobile device. You've got lens flares, environmental effects, and even individually rendered leaves on the trees. Uh, so as uh, Randall takes the express elevator down here, um, we can see that uh, in addition to the, the graphics looking beautiful, the animation is very fluid, and it just controls beautifully. This is the kind of experience that until recently, uh, you would have not have been able to see anywhere out of a dedicated gaming console. So Horn is really putting uh, all those uh, 12 GPU cores to work, but um, of course, not everything in Horn is shiny and beautiful. cut there. We don't want to ruin the surprise, but uh, it ends badly. <laughs> so going from alive to dead, uh, we're going to uh, take a look at Dead Trigger from Madfinger Games. Uh, they're a developer uh, located in Prague. Now, while for some games, all right, I've got my Prague over here, nice, uh, uh, guns and zombies would be enough of a selling point. But Dead Trigger uh, uses the computational power of the Nexus 7 to create everything from, you see these water droplets that are refracting and, and sort of going down here on the lens. Uh, you got realistic fogs, uh, and of course, lots and lots of blood. All right. And he was supposed to do a headshot there, and he did it. Give it up for Randall. Nice job. Who says mobile gaming has to be casual? <laughs> so now that you've seen everything Nexus 7 can do, uh, Hugo, I think we all have one remaining question, which is, how can I get one? Thanks, Chris. That was awesome. So um, Nex Nexus 7, um, built to bring you the best of Google in a super thin, light, and portable device that's optimized for Google Play. It's a fantastic device that we want to get into the hands of as many people as we can. That's why starting today, we're making Nexus 7 available starting at only $199. And when you buy your Nexus 7, we'll also give you a $25 credit to spend in the Google Play Store, as well as some great content to build out your library. You'll get the Transformers Dark of the Moon movie from our friends at Paramount Pictures. The book, The Born Dominion, and free magazine issues of Popular Science, Food Network, Condé Nast Traveler, and others. Starting today, you can order Nexus 7 directly from Google Play with orders shipping in mid-July. It's available in the US, 
Canada, the UK, and Australia, with more countries to follow. Now, Android was always meant to go beyond phones and tablets. Last year at I.O., we showed you a sneak peek of a new kind of Android media device, which we called Project Tungsten. We've been really busy since then, and now we want to show you what we've created. And to do that, please welcome Joe Britt and Matt Hershenson. All right. Thank you, Hugo. Uh, you just saw an amazing tablet for enjoying all your great Google Play content, but we want to go further. Uh, we're entering a new era in consumer electronics where the combination of hardware, software, and the cloud is opening up an entirely new world of possibilities. With Project Tungsten, we brought together the power of Android and Google Play to develop the first consumer electronics product Google has ever designed and built from the ground up. We call it Nexus Q. Let's take a look. I think most people have no idea what it is when they first look at it. We're trying to create something that is unexpected. Powerful and mysterious. There was a point in time where consumer electronics were a physical thing, a transistor radio or a cassette player, a Walkman. And then the software element of it became very important in terms of the experience. And now I think we're entering this era where consumer electronics is the hardware and the software and the cloud. Q is a small Android powered computer and it connects to all of the media that you have stored in the cloud. The fact that it was going to be in your home meant that it needed to be not only functional, but also beautiful. Google products are used by millions and millions of people every day on the web and mobile side. How that translates into physical products, it raises a lot of interesting uh, opportunities. This is how you get the software from the device to your phone. Now that we're moving into an era where devices are controlled from your phone or your tablet, we can allow people to use their devices to control their entertainment in a very simple way. People's stereo systems, they were very, very much revered, but when you go around to people's houses, you would never touch them. The idea here is that people can be inquisitive, play with it, but also start using it interactively. And it's the sort of thing that you think, why can't everything do this? Isn't this the right way that music should be? This really is a third wave of consumer electronics, and it's all about the cloud. Nexus Q is just the beginning. Thank you. Um, we're, we're really excited to unveil Nexus Q. Uh, it's a small Android-powered computer that's designed to live in your home. It plugs into the best speakers and TV in your house, and it's always connected to the cloud. Nexus Q tightly integrates with Google Play, so you can easily stream music and video. You use your Android phone or tablet to control it, but you're not actually streaming content from your device to it. Instead, Nexus Q pulls your content directly from Google Play. So in other words, you use your phone or tablet to control the cloud. Now, before I show you how this works, Matt's going to tell you about all the design and engineering that went into creating Nexus Q. Thanks, Joe. When we started developing this product, we wanted to build something really special, not just another black box. The industrial design is totally unique. And what we've managed to put into this small sphere is nothing short of incredible. The heart of Nexus Q is an OMAP 4460, which is the same chip used in Galaxy Nexus. It also is a state-of-the-art audiophile-grade amplifier built right in so you can hook your speakers right up. 
And at 25 watts, this small sphere can really fill a room with beautiful, clear, crisp sound. Of course, music and video today are digital. Some would say analog outputs are a little old fashioned. Nexus Q has optical digital audio and micro HDMI outputs so you can stream music and 1080p video to the best speakers and the best TV in your home. Nexus Q has dual band Wi-Fi and ethernet, as well as NFC and Bluetooth, which lets you set it up in a few minutes right from your phone. There's also a micro USB port to connect future accessories and encourage general hackability. <laughs> always popular and always a great feature. The hardware is pretty cool, but what brings Nexus Q to life is Android. Mm -hmm. Joe's going to show us what it can do. OK, let's take a look at Nexus Q in action. So Matt made me move my living room to the stage here today. Uh, and I'm going to start by playing some music for you. So up here, let's go to the device. Uh, and we can see that uh, this is Randall's device, and he's gone into the Google Play Music app. Here we can see his entire music collection. Uh, we can see his playlists. As he scrolls around, we can also see his artists, albums, and so on, all stored in the cloud. Now, Randall is going to choose a room to start playing music in, and he's picking the living room. Um, let's see what music he picks. And it looks like he picked The Need Superficial by Odyssey. You have very good taste, Randall. And it's very appropriate because Building Q has been a bit of an Odyssey. Sounds really good. And as you can hear, it starts playing right away from the cloud. Now, we wanted the experience of listening to music to be more than just great quality sound. Part of what makes Nexus Q so cool is that listening to music can also be visual and interactive. It lights up with a ring of LEDs around the perimeter, which respond to the music as it plays. And if you have it hooked up to a TV, you'll see this visualizer as well. If you have more than one Nexus Q, you can play music throughout your entire house. You just pick the rooms you want, and it'll play your music in sync. Now, for example, Randall's going to show us how this works. He's going to pick the, he's going to add the green room Nexus Q, so the rest of the team back there can enjoy the music in perfect sync with the living room here on stage. You know, mobile devices have made music more of a personal and sometimes isolating experience, but music is often best enjoyed with friends. That's why we made Nexus Q the first ever social streaming device. It's a cloud-connected jukebox where everyone brings their own music to the party. Your friends can just start adding songs from their own Google Play music libraries to Nexus Q. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to ask Matt and my friend Chris to help me out. Where did Chris go? Oh, here comes Chris. Chris, please come on over and have a seat on the sofa. So Far away. now Randall is going to start playing another song from his Nexus 7. And once he does that, we can see the music cue. And oh, Randall picked the same song. So we've, we've already heard this song. Um, so uh, let's give somebody else a chance to play the DJ. Matt, what would you like to hear? Well, how about this song, All the Lights, by Fawn? Reminds me of those cool lights on Nexus Q. Nice. And so Matt is going to use his device to add a song to the queue. And what we should see is that song added to the queue. And there it is. Look. So how about another one, Matt? OK. Pretty cool. I'm going to do some more. How about this song, Dark Star, by Pulisea? That's a really cool song. So, you can see that the songs Matt just added appeared right in the queue on Randall's device. So everybody who has a device is able to see the queue of music that's going to be played. Chris, what do you have to add? I think I'm going to add this really great new rockabilly guitarist, J.D. McPherson, but I'm not interested in waiting around, so I think I'm just going to take right over. So, so this is a great example. So at any time, anyone can move songs around the queue, and anyone can take control of the listening experience. Everyone can see the queue in real time on their devices. It's pretty cool that my friends can now play their music in my living room.
So that's music on Nexus Q with multi-room playback and social streaming. A great amplifier built right in with digital outputs so you can hear music on the best speakers and TV in your home. And speaking of TV, wouldn't it be cool if you could bring all of your movies to a friend's house? Well, with Google Play, you're always carrying your entire digital library with you. And as a social streaming device, Nexus Q lets anyone connect and start playing videos from their phone right away. Have you guys seen any movies lately? What do you guys think about Transformers Dark of the Moon? I hear it's pretty good, but I always think, is there more than meets the eye? The robots in disguise. <laughs> do we have I, that movie? I have it in my library right here. OK, cool. Let's check it out. So Matt's going into Play Movies and TV app on his Nexus 7. And all he has to do is choose the living room TV and hit play. I was watching it at home last night. I'm going to start it up here, and it's going to pick up at the very same spot where I left off when I was playing it at home last night. Check it out. I always like Bumblebee. Oh, he's dead. It's awesome. OK, cool. So, so you just saw how easy it was for Matt to play a movie from his collection on my TV. No messy authentication or configuration needed. It just works. And remember, what's really cool here is that Matt is controlling what's happening from his Android tablet, but the movie is coming directly from the cloud. Now, it's always fun to watch YouTube videos with friends. And Nexus Q works great with YouTube. Just like with music, you and your friends can play your favorite YouTube videos right on Nexus Q. And again, the content comes from the cloud. So Randall's going to go into the YouTube app and search for Android in Space. Some of the guys on our team worked with a student who had a great idea to send an Android figurine into space. So let's take a look at that. So that's really cool. But now let's take a look at another video. Matt, what would you like to see? There's this cool video of these guys beatboxing on a Google Plus Hangout on their Galaxy Nexus. Let's play that. Cool. So as you can see, Matt was able to just take over the TV straight from YouTube. No more passing around a keyboard or laptop. Everyone is in control. So that's Nexus Q. Amazing hardware with an integrated app. It streams music, movies, and TV from Google Play, as well as YouTube. And what's really cool is that it's the world's first ever social streaming device. Nexus Q will sell for $299. It'll be available in the US to start, and you'll be able to purchase it right from Google Play. You can place a pre-order starting today, and we'll begin shipping orders in July. Thanks, everyone. And here's Hugo to wrap things up. Thanks, guys. That was pretty awesome. Well, um, we hope you guys liked what you saw here today. 400 million Android devices, Jelly Bean, Google Play, Nexus 7, Nexus Q. Now, the Android ecosystem would be nothing without our developer community. So I wanted to thank you guys for your incredible support. Thank you. We hope you enjoy the 26 dedicated Android sessions, plus all the sandboxes that we put together for you here at Google I.O. There's a lot to see. And look forward to seeing you at the party tonight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Vic Gundotra. Hello again, everybody. You know, it was exactly one year ago today, and it was a day that I don't think I'm ever going to forget. You see, it was the eve before we unveiled Google+, and I was pretty nervous. After all, we had no idea how people were going to react. It's amazing that tomorrow morning will be our one-year anniversary. Thank you all for your support for Google+. 
And because of your support, because of your support, we gain momentum every week. And we're just more than a little bit excited. We really think we're on to something special. To give you an example of what that something is, let's go to this video. Everyone good to go? Good to go. I'm going to click on Start Broadcast. Hi, everybody. Once again, we're going to have our virtual star party working the telescopes. I love today. science. I love communicating and exploring about space and astronomy. So when Google Plus came out, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could get a telescope streaming an image right into the Hangout? We've got Mike Phillips, and he's in North Carolina. We've got Gary Ganella. What's your view, Gary? The monkey heads in the upper part of Orion. Before, this was impossible. But now we're getting people from Mexico and South America and South Africa, Malaysia. We're starting to capture the whole Earth. Because suddenly, there is a way we're able to bring all these people together and put on a show. <laughs> Too close. I think everyone's ready but Mike. Oh, I think I see something. Can you, can you move a little down, Mike? There it is. Oh, man. Look at that. Being able to look out into space gives us context for how we live in our day-to-day -day experience. It shows us that we're part of this bigger universe. Gary, you've got the rosette for me. I do. I mean, for us. I mean, for us, for everyone to see, not <laughs> it, just me. Don't, don't kid us. It, it's for you. Chris. It's for me, yeah. Now we have pattern and green. You guys are just into it. It's like a pattern. <laughs> Sorry you missed the first part of that video, but I think it got the point across. You know, because of people like Frank and Pamela, we now have a vibrant community of astronomers on Google+. Yes, astronomers. And you know what? There are Frank and Pamela's for all other kinds of subjects, too, from health to knitting to sports to photography to music, even nuclear physics. Yes, millions of people are finding ways to connect with each other to share their passions, to find their community, and they're doing it on Google+. Now, Google+, is at the heart of our efforts to really create a simpler, more intuitive experience for all Google users. You should think of it in two parts. The first is our social spine. Once you've logged in and upgraded to Google+, we want to present you with one seamless experience, not a series of disconnected products. So far, in just one year, over 250 million people have upgraded to Google+, with 150 million of those being 30-day actives, and 50% of that number signing in every day. Those daily active users spend more than an hour with Google. Now, the other part is our social destination. Now, that part is growing quickly. And it really began with a base of zero last year, because we're building a brand new community. There, we're seeing really impressive engagement and fast growth. Active Google Plus users are now spending more than 12 minutes a day in the stream. That's up from nine minutes just a few months ago. Now, you might be asking, well, Vic, what comes next? And the answer there lies in mobile. You know, the growth of smartphones has been spectacular. It has been a sea change for our industry. And the same is true for Google+. We now have more users engaging with Google+, from mobile than from desktop. Let me repeat that. We have more people using Google+, from mobile than from desktop. This is a significant uh, situation, and one we take very seriously. In fact, if you've been watching us, over the past several weeks, you've seen us upgrade our mobile clients for iOS and for Android to really great reviews. So thank you. Yet we keep hearing the same request from users, which is, hey, Vic, when are we going to get a native tablet version of Google Plus? Well, your answer is you're going to get it today. Now, I could spend an hour talking to you about this new application. I believe it's the best version of Google Plus we've ever designed. But my trusty friend Matt and I instead are just going to highlight a few of the features. Now, the first thing you'll notice, if we switch over to demo, there we go. The first thing you'll notice is a stream that's gorgeous, a stream that's fast, 
fluid, beautiful, photos pop, text is crisp, even actions like plus one and comments are not just prominent, they're playful. We're also stylizing the stream in such a way that it makes it very easy to scan while still highlighting what's important. So for example, uh, photos, uh, text, videos, um, all have a distinctive look, so it's easy to know what someone is sharing at a glance. At the same time, we look for posts that are becoming very popular with more engagement, and we make them bigger so they help grab your attention. This stream just feels great to use, and I can't wait to get it into your hands. Now, the second thing I want to show you is, of course, one of the foundations of Google+, which is the Hangout experience. And Hangouts, as you know, is mo live multi-user video. But on a tablet, it enables a kind of intimacy that's not possible on other devices. You can really just hold the tablet in your hand, lean back, and uh, enjoy your friends and family's uh, company. Now, in this case, Matt is uh, inviting some people to join him. On both screens here, you see the invite experience or the ringing experience. It's gorgeous. You can swipe to answer it just like a call, or you can accept the Hangout. And now, of course, you can see everyone in the Hangout. We've muted the audio so that we don't get feedback. But you can see it's typically what you see in Hangouts, people just having fun. And uh, of course, you can pin videos. You can swipe left and right to see who's in the room. And my favorite feature, Google Plus Hangouts will automatically switch video based on whoever's talking to really make it feel like a live conversation. You can see they're having <laughs> lots and lots of fun. OK. Now, there's a lot more uh, other improvements in the app that we just don't have time to show you. Um, things like a brand new uh, navigation, a new ribbon bar, a new place to see notifications, uh, brand new profiles that make it fun to explore other people's content. It's just fantastic. Now, if you're an iPad user, we've got you covered too. In fact, everything we've just shown you is launching on the iPad as well, coming soon. Let's switch to the iPad. And you'll note on the iPad, so I'll wait till you get it up, on the iPad, it's gorgeous. You get this beautiful stream, you get the same immersive Hangouts, you get all the new navigation, the new profiles, and it looks just gorgeous on that Retina display. Okay, so that it's the Google Plus tablet app, rolling out for Android today, available for the iPad very soon. What do you think? <laughs> well, although, although we just updated the Android smartphone app barely a month ago, we have an additional surprise for you. All those improvements that you just saw for tablets are coming to the Android uh, smartphone today in Android Play. It's also available for your phone. So enjoy that. Now, we have one more Google Plus announcement today. And it goes back to really why we started the project in the first place, to really bring real life sharing to software. Think about the time that you spend with the people that you love, your family, your best friends. Think about where you spend that time with them. It's likely at a barbecue, a, a restaurant, a, a picnic, a wedding. The common theme here is that these are all events. Events have a wonderful way to bring people together. They allow you to create and share cherished moments. Yet, unfortunately, the substance of a real-world event is lost online. Just consider the state of today's online tools. Online event tools basically are glorified web forms that ask you, are you going, yes or no? They kind of help you manage who you're inviting to the party. But what happens when the party starts? Or what about after the party? Today's online tools bail when you need them the most. In life, we plan, we party, we keep in touch. We think software should make all of that more awesome before, during, and after your event. That's why today, we're so excited to be announcing Google Plus events. <clears throat> now, for the next few moments, I'm going to show you how you can use Google Plus events before, during, and after your next party. Let's start off with before. Now, perhaps the most important thing we do uh, is invite someone. You know, when you invite someone to your home, uh, or to a wedding, or even to your favorite restaurant, that's a deeply intimate act. You know, you're handpicking who's going to be in the room. 
So we think that who you're inviting should feel special too. And so that's why we designed the product to offer lots of ways to send absolutely beautiful invitations in something we call cinemagraphic themes. I'll show you that in a moment. We also understand that you need to manage the entire process. And we built in great management tools, including deep integration with Google Calendar. Let's just show you. Matt here is going to invite some friends to a brunch. I'll wait till we switch to demo. OK, so Matt's going to use the product. He's going to click on the calendar button there in the share box. And he's going to now start inviting people to a brunch in Half Moon Bay. It's a city about 30 miles from here. It happens to be his hometown. And uh, he'll fill in some basic information. Now he'll choose a theme. Now here's where it gets really amazing. We have over two, uh, over two dozen of these cinemagraphs, beautifully animated themes. You can see here, uh, you may not be able to see the subtle animation in the audience, but some of these are just amazing. Lights flicker. You can see the barbecue. That's one of my favorites. And we really professionally built some amazing ways to make your guests feel special. Now, since this is a beach party, a beach brunch, why don't you pick a beach theme? And he'll go ahead and set that. Now, finally, Matt will add guests, whether or not they're on Google+. He just adds their emails, and then he sends the invitation. Now, let's see what it's like to receive the invitation. In this case, we're going to switch. We're going to pretend to be Lindsay, one of Matt's imaginary friends. Yes, he has lots of imaginary friends still. Okay. Now, from Lindsay's viewpoint, she gets this beautiful event post in the stream. And when she hovers over that, it unfolds, just like you might with an invitation you received in the mail. Lindsay can check her schedule right from the post with calendar integration. And she can see that she's free, and so she'll say yes, that she's going. Now, if you jump over to Lindsay's calendar, a brand new feature in Google Calendar, first, the social uh, event has been added. Matt's photo is in the corner, and she, if she clicks on that, she gets that beautiful cinemagraph integrated right in. Isn't that awesome? She, she can even see the beautiful faces of, the, of her friends who are going. All of these small details, we think, help set the mood for your event, the right mood right from the start. Now, finally, we uh, can click through into the uh, event page detail, and there, once again, uh, Lindsay can pull down on the invite, get that beautiful experience. She can see updates from the host. She can see photos. She can see who else is going. OK, let's go back to slides. So we think that the combination of cinemagraphs, calendar integration, those other things that we showed you really make it a, both a beautiful and a useful way for you to manage your party. But that's just before the event. Now let's talk about during the event. Now, it's no surprise that during the event, photos are a big deal. Just taking a photo causes people to smile and laugh. They help us relive the event when it's over. But you know what the problem is. Today, with the proliferation of devices and smartphones, everyone's photos get lost. They're with all the guests, and they never, ever come back together. So no one can enjoy them in one spot. With Google Plus Events, we have a groundbreaking feature, my favorite feature of the product, and it's called party mode, and it fixes those problems. Once you've enabled party mode on your device, all new photos automatically get added to the event in real time. As more and more guests turn on party mode, all those photos instantly appear. In this way, Google Plus event gives your party a visual pulse. We've even added a live slideshow that you can show during the event to make it fun. Let's show you. Let's go back to demo. Matt's obviously in the mood. His brunch has already started. Now, because it's already started, Android knows that, he's, that this is the correct time. And it sends him this notification. Now, at Matt's discretion, he can choose with one click to take that first photo and turn on party mode. Go ahead, Matt. Take the picture. All right, very good. Now, if you note at the top, the green icon stays there. So you always know when party mode is on. And as guests turn this on, they can uh, uh, control the settings right there in notifications. Let's go back to the events landing page. Now, on the events landing page, you get to see all the photos stream in. 
people who are at the event who are taking pictures, they will just show up right here. I guess you can see the brunch is going on over there, and they just stream in real time. And that's a lot of fun to kind of just watch as it happens. Now, in addition to having this view, we've built in a slideshow view. So Matt, if you go to the top there, it says play the live slideshow. And if you click during the event, we'll go to an absolutely gorgeous full screen light box and your guest photos will appear instantly after they've taken those pictures. Isn't that just great? Okay, we've talked about before, during, and after. Uh, let's switch back to slides and let's talk about after the event. Okay, after the event, what happens when the guests go home? Well, we reminisce about the event, we might think of something that was very special and we try to hold on to those memories because getting everyone's photos and videos, we've given up on that. Well, not anymore. As you saw with party mode, and Google Plus will send emails to all your guests, ask them to upload photos they may have taken from other, like DSLRs, and then we'll do something amazing. We'll put all of them in one place in chronological order. Let me show you. Let's show what the uh, events page looks like. Now, one of our teammates, Dave, recently got married, and like any good engineer, he decided to test events at his own wedding. And what you're looking at is really his wedding. So thank you, Dave, for doing this. Um, at the top, you see, uh, actually, let's, let's skip the top there for a second, and let's look at this. Uh, what you're seeing here, Matt, if you just scroll down, is literally all the photos from all of the guests who had party mode turned on. And if Matt uh, moves over any one of those photos, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the pictures of the guests who contributed that photograph. We automatically put them in chronological order, so from the ceremony to the reception, you can see the event from different perspectives. It's the first time you've been able to go do this in a beautiful way. Now, if you go all the way to the top of uh, the stream there, we do also do something else that's pretty cool. We analyze all the photos and we look at the photos that got the most engagement, either comments or plus one. And there, at the events highlights at the top, we give you the most popular photo. So, Matt, if you click on that top one, you can see that was the photo that got the most engagement from his wedding, the most uh, engagement from his guests. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, in addition, if there was a photo of you and you were tagged in a photo, your photos would be there right at the top. Now, what if you have a friend and you just want to see photos that they took? Well, you can see the different photographers who had party mode turned on and who contributed. In this case, Matt clicked on Denise, and now he's seeing all of the photos coming just from Denise. You know, when you consider what Google Plus uh, uh, events does for before, during, and after uh, an event, it really speaks to what we're trying to do with Google hey, Vic. overall. Hey, Vic. a really cool event for you. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> Guys? All right. We, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to do something pretty magical here, and we have a special surprise for you. We've got something pretty special for you. It's a little bit time sensitive, so I apologize for interrupting. Um, you've seen some really compelling demos here. They were slick. They were robust. Uh, this is going to be nothing like that. <laughs> this can go wrong in about 500 different ways. So tell me now, who wants to see a demo of Glass? <laughs> so. So we've been really excited to test it for a few months. The unit I actually really want to show you, uh, I lent to a friend, and, and he's going to be here momentarily. Uh, my friend's JT. He does a lot of skiing, base jumping, wingsuiting, all sorts of crazy things. And uh, he's actually pretty close by. He's just about a mile overhead right now with his buddies. Um, they have a few glass units. If you guys can maybe afford to wait that couple minutes. Maybe they'll bring him down. Nice to All right. Uh, we're, we're about to get into a hangout here with, uh, with JT. Hey, uh, JT, JT, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, hello. We might have a few technical issues, as I mentioned. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, we're just down here in Moscone. I got a few thousand people here. I was hoping to, uh, to maybe get that unit I lent you down here 
and I thought maybe you guys could show us a fun time on the way down. Yeah, heck, you, you can hear me down there. I've been listening to your speech uh, through the Hangout. It's pretty cool. Cool, cool. Um, well, I see you and friends are, are pretty close by there. Any chance we can get a little view out the window? Heck yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful up here. We had oh, a visual on Moscone a minute ago. All right, this is the Hangout from Glass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're coming uh, a little closer, and I think we'll be able to get you that device pretty quickly, actually. All right, I, I see the roof of Moscone there. So if you guys can, uh, you know, be safe, but get it down here in a hurry for us, uh, we'd love to watch that. OK, yeah, you'll have to stand by. We've got our wingsuits, so uh, we've got a pretty good range. It's kind of interesting. People have uh, watched us fly many times before, but I don't think that the world's ever tagged along live for a ride. I mean, we're, uh, nobody really knows the outcome of this jump. We're feeling really confident about it. How are you feeling, Pete? Well, we're, we're all rooting for you. Awesome, uh, what do you guys think? Cool. Should they go for it? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. A bit not in position yet, huh, Julian? About one minute, sir, okay? Maybe you got to entertain the crowd a little. That looks like the view down. It looks like a long way down. Yeah, you can turn, good. It, turn it sideways. Oh, yeah, there's the ballpark. This is good stuff, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Moscow Center, I got a visual on you. OK. So this is one of the things, as we've been uh, experimenting with glass, just the ability to really share. And we've posted some pictures, but as we start to experiment, being able to share what you're seeing live is really amazing. And you know, we're not, we don't know what's going to happen here. I, you know, these guys are all really good. They're trained. and. Uh, I have great confidence, but this is um, this is a demo that. Yeah. All right, doors open. Doors open. All right, happy flight. You know what? We can go. He's gonna do this. It's gonna be beautiful. Twenty seconds. Yeah, look at that. All right. Francisco! Alright. Everyone exit with a rock. Woo! Alright, yeah, cool, I'm on pins Everybody's and needles right super now. Happy? Yeah. yeah. Nice and close in there. Eight. They've got to get the right place so we can hit the roof. I'm gonna record take a few pictures to record this from posterity. And they're off! All right, and they're flying. Look at that, look at that. You can see Moscone right below there. Live hangout through Google Glass. We've got four skydivers. And, and they're under canopy, shoots are open. Woohoo. OK, where's Vic? Vic, hey, look, this is a Hangout on Air. Uh, so uh, it's a little bit tricky landing on a building, as you might imagine. I don't know if you've ever tried this kind of thing before. Uh, but uh, um, you, can, uh, you can see all their perspectives now. They're going to have to line up uh, one after another to get down to the roof here. Um, it's a little bit of um, it's a pretty big roof, actually, which is great for their landing. Um, and you can see there's a, there's a little uh, yellow arrow that they're aiming for. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Hopefully they, they landed. All right. And they're coming in. First one's coming in. All right. So, um, hey, folks, thank you. Woo 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 hey, folks, thank you
Okay, so the roof is a little bit big there, so uh, it would take a while to run down the length of it. So we got actually a few bikers up there for this eventuality. Um, we got them wearing glass too, and uh, there's our little package. Let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can get it here in a hurry. All right, here we go. First person to a glass. Here are the bikers. Yeah. Woohoo! Here they come down. Um, and you know, there's only one good way down the side of a building. Have fun. It's pretty high up there if you haven't been up there before. Don't try this at home, kids. These are trained professionals. All right, now we gotta get down there. Wanna unplug me? All right, here they going. Oh wait, 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 Close call. Sorry about that. Uh, um, so this is pretty wild. I've never seen that perspective uh, before. <laughs> and uh, delivery. yeah, I'm really looking delivery. forward to this. All right, we got a couple more bikes. It's a little bit of a long way. Woo. I apologize. Woo. Don't run anybody over. Oh. oh. All right. Please stay in your seats, folks. Don't get into the aisles. Please keep the aisles clear. Here they come up. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> yeah, that was awesome, guys. Woohoo! All right. That was pretty amazing. All right, a big round of applause for our bikers. All right, I got a little picture of you there with my glass. All right, thank you guys so much. All right, we got, uh, I just wanted to, some of our athletes who are performers, just want to give them another big round of applause. We got the repellers in the back. Let's sign them up. And, uh, Takes a little while, and uh, and we got this. Uh, let's see, and the skydiver should be chasing close behind him. Thank you guys so much. That was amazing. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. All right. Now maybe. Um, Maybe we should, well, all right, well, hell, come on up, guys, you're already here. Come on up, take a bow. These are the repellers, all the bikers you saw up there. And there's the skydiving crew coming down the aisle. Hey, JT, nice. that was amazing. Nice, man. All right. Well, thank hey, thank you, you guys. Awesome. We, were, we were worried about you. That was awesome. All right, thank you all so much. Uh, now maybe we should tell you a little bit about glass. All right, guys, have fun. You can meet them. Uh, they'll be out and around if you want to chat with them. Thank you so much. Now, here's what. Uh, no, no, this is the wrong one. Wait. I'm going to have to. I, I think we have to do it again. All right, we'll find a time. We actually might find a time to, if you want to see behind the scenes and maybe catch some of that activity on, uh, through a Hangout, uh, tune in tomorrow. Uh, but now I just want to tell you a bit about how we made that happen and uh, why we're so excited about glass. And tell you that, I have Baba and Isabel. Please welcome them aboard. Um, good morning. So what can I say? Awesome. Um, I wanted to take a minute and tell you what was the device that enabled this beautiful demonstration that we just saw. The devices that we used 
were Google Glass prototypes and quite similar actually to what I'm wearing at the moment. Uh, this device includes, which by the way is not that you see on, <laughs> behind me, slightly different, uh, has a display so I can see visual information right now, images, uh, video. It has a camera to capture a picture and video also. It has a processor, a pretty powerful processor to process information and a lot of memory to store information. In order to interact with this device, we have a touchpad on the side. Uh, we also have a little button here, so I'd like to take a picture of you right now, which I just did. We have a microphone, so we can collect audio information. We also have a small speaker, so I can receive audio information. The device also has a number of sensors. So we have gyroscopes, accelerometers, and compass. So it's aware of its location with respect to my body, and is also aware of its location in the broader uh, physical world. And lastly, and very importantly, it has multiple radios for data communication. To give you a bit about the history of our, uh, our group, we started about two, two and a half years ago to incorporate this, te this much technology into a very small form factor. And the picture that you see behind me, this is a good friend of mine, one of the pioneers of wearable computing and one of our team members. This is Thad Starner. We had to hack things together. Uh, we're sort of a hacky, informal group. Uh, to get the technology on, pe on people's bodies, to make it wearable, and test out, uh, test out ideas. So we started from this point two, two and a half years ago, and through a lot of hard, hard work by, by our team and experimentation, um, we made progress and uh, reduced the form factor to what you see here. Now, I would like to invite our uh, lead designer, Isabel, to talk about some of the design philosophy that has gone into this device. Thank you. So we created Glass so that you can interact with the virtual world without distracting you from the real world. And one clear example of this is that we decided to actually position the display above your eye. And Glass as a whole is designed to be close to your senses but not blocking them. And this picture shows so clearly how we don't want technology to get in the way. The baby looks into the mom's eyes, they connect, and while doing that, she can capture this beautiful moment without any distractions. And whether it's with family or friends, we want to empower people to use technology naturally, like in this moment of celebration. So we wanted to pack all this amazing technology into this product to let you do amazing things with it. But that's also in slight conflict, too, that if this is not ridiculously light, it doesn't belong on your face. And we didn't only want to make it physically light, but also visually light. We don't want to compete too much with the user's own individuality, so no superfluous detailing, and we really try to reduce it to its core essence. And one of the results of this is that our latest prototype weighs less on your nose than many sunglasses. So, um, when it really dawned on me that we were onto something was when I started seeing people in our team posting pictures on Google Plus while running with it. And if it's not super comfortable and super sturdy, <laughs> how would you be able to show off your serve like this? This is Max on our team. He, he wanted to brag a little bit. Um, but um, sometimes it's just you want to do less conventional sports, like jumping into ball pits. So we want glass to work for many people in most situations. And realizing that 
we needed to create a scalable design. We decided to put all the components off to one side, creating an asymmetrical design, but that's balanced. And what this allows us to do is to design different form factors for the frames. And this is something we're experimenting a lot with, and here you can see Mike, Lisa, and Maddie wearing their favorite styles. So we have this uh, incredibly powerful platform, lots of capability, uh, integrated into a very small form factor wearable. And you might be wondering, what is the impetus for our team to embark on this journey to build this system? And what are the uses that we envision for this? What's the, what's the reason for people actually to put this on their head? Broadly speaking, we have two uh, broad uh, regions of aspiration. The first one has to do with communicating through images. And the second one with very rapid access to information. If you think about actually how we connect to people today, we might have a conversation or we may call them. So there's an audio way of connecting to others. We may send them an SMS. We may send them an email. We may send them a letter. So we use letters of alphabet, our writing, to uh, convey our, our emotions to other people of how we feel at that very moment or at any given point in time. And we believe actually communication with images and access to devices that empower people to communicate with images in new ways are uh, truly revolutionary and may actually uh, hey. enable people to um. uh, connect in new and pot uh, potentially better ways. Now, wearing okay. glass has a okay. certain so unique aspects to it. For example, when you have a companion Maybe camera that's always with you, you can catch fleeting know. moments in your life that otherwise would be always lost. It's an, a, an example of a group member walking on the beach. I'm sure many of you in the audience, like myself, are uh, parents. And many, many times you've asked and wished that, oh, I wish I had a camera with me right now to capture this unique moment with my family. When you have glass, you can actually capture those moments and have those memories forever recorded for you. This is pretty important, actually, uh, when we enable such thing. Another unique aspect of glass is that this is genuinely the first person uh, point of view through your eyes as you see the world. This is uh, one of our team members uh, finishing a race. And you can, uh, you can see actually how it felt at that very moment, basically going through a very long run. Or you might have a moment of respite. And this is how the world looked, like, uh, looked to you as you were enjoying uh, a few seconds of break uh, through, your, uh, through your busy day. And going back to the theme of family, um, you can actually record how your life uh, looked like with your loved ones through the first person point of view. Uh, quite, quite important, I think, and it could be very, very powerful. And uh, honestly, there are some moments that you may not want to record forever, but sometimes it happens. So this is, uh, uh, yeah. This is Will, he's sitting right here. He's one of our team members, and he's just practicing pool. So these things can also uh, happen. So you've seen all these unique moments that our team members have captured just using the device for a couple of months. So all this footage is from our team using Glass, which is pretty incredible. Um, but what really excites me uh, about this is not only the unique perspective from your point of view, but how easy and seamless it is to share. And I think this encouraged people to, to do new things with it. I mean, we just pictured, we just saw how it is to jump out of a plane. And you can experience these moments where you feel like you're there. And you don't actually even need a glass device to do that. Um, so here is, um, uh, for example, learning new things. Uh, this is uh, Bo uh, going through step by step how to create uh, very tasty dumplings. Um, and I think there's something really powerful about this. And sometimes it's all about feeling like you're there. Um, this uh, stream of pictures showed up, and I was sitting at my desk, a little bit bored, and this comes up. And I had this visceral reaction that I got so much anxiety all of a sudden. I could totally relate to Steven sitting in this chair. And, and these pictures continuously showed up in real time. And I was also able to write little comments and say, dude, it's all going to be OK. 
And sometimes it's not about grand things. Sometimes it's only about communicating an emotion or in a situation. And this is Mike walking on the street in, in New York and um, looking for some empathy from his friends in California. So the second main aspiration that we have for Glass is to enable people to access information very quickly. Nowadays, if you have a question, if you're looking for um, uh, answers to your questions, you may do a variety of things. You may seek a friend and ask him what, what is the answer to my question. You may go to the library and go through books. Uh, but more likely than not, you will reach to your pocket, take out the cell phone, unlock it, and do a search, and you get some amazing results back, actually. I, you know, we saw some incredible technology just, just now demonstrated by Android. And what we aspire to do is to make that even much, much faster. And someday, you would like to make this so fast that you don't feel that you have a question, you have to go seek the knowledge somewhere, bring it back, and analyze it. We would like it to be so fast that you feel you know it that fast. And that day may not be today, that day may not be tomorrow, but at least that's our aspiration. And we would like to be able to empower people to access the information very, very quickly. And in, in practice, basically, they feel more knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about certain topics. Now, there are different types of information that you might have in front of you. So for example, you could be in a place, you'd like to have information about this place without disconnecting from your physical environment. Uh, you might also want to know how to navigate to the next, uh, next place. There's a lot of interesting information actually in this scene. Or you may be biking and you want to know how fast you're going. Obviously, you don't want to disengage from the physical world, go, go to the computing world and come back. You want to remain engaged with the physical world in a very unhindered way and still get the information that you would like to have. Um, another thing that may come up is that you may face an entirely new and unexpected situation. So there's a picture from a friend of mine, uh, Xiaoyu, he's a team member, and he was sent to the market by his wife to do some shopping, and you just are baffled at what you're, you're seeing, and you would like to have information right at that very moment in front of you without disengaging from the physical world. So we're very excited about this possibility, and uh, I'm particularly ex excited to present this to you because the crowd here, the people who are watching, are some of the smartest people, developers in the world. And I think you would actually hopefully help us to figure out what kind of information we should, uh, we should bring here and put in front of people's eyes. So the, the possibilities are just incredible. So we shared a little bit about our perspective on Glass and from our team and pictures and videos and also some of the incredible things you can do. Um, but what really sums it up for me is this video. This is baby June. Our family is in France, so for us it's really important to show them how she's growing, how she's changing. With babies, it's really hard to grab the right moments. A smile just lasts for a few seconds and that's all. When you use a, a big camera, she gets really focused on the camera. You know, she smiles at faces, not at devices. Every day, we try to go out for a little walk. June really loves being in the stroller. Everything is new for her. So we really like to take funny pictures of her. I think she enjoyed it. <laughs> hey, salut. Bonjour, Anka, how are you? I'm good, but I miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We have these little American glasses that she likes to wear. It's kind of amazing for us French to have this little American girl at home. All right. All right, thank you guys very much. And I'm so jazzed that that actually worked. The whole bit, airship everything, and this presentation. Um, I wasn't really expecting it to. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to tell you there are, well, you've seen a whole bunch of stuff. I've, I'm really personally really excited about Glass in my day-to-day -day usage. You know, I've had moments with family like that. Um, and there, there are all kinds of things this can capture and share. 
but, but obviously, uh, capturing images, videos, even sharing video, that's only a part of what uh, a wearable computer can do. And uh, um, we've highlighted a few other little things here, but why are we showing you, uh, you know, basically this, this kind of utility? And there are basically three reasons. Um, the first is because we've just found it incredibly compelling since, since we made these and started using them out and about. Uh, we've just found that to be amazing. Um, the second is it's actually one of the things we can show you uh, because, you know, you all can't experience what it's like to have, uh, to have all this information available right here just like that. Um, and so, you know, there are other kinds of things that we use it for, but it's kind of hard to make a... Uh, it's hard to demonstrate. I guess you could put one glass on top of another glass, and then you'd kind of <laughs> see what we experience. But that might be awkward. Uh, so, so you haven't had a chance to experience it. And, uh, and third, you know, we're a pretty small team, and we've only had so much time uh, to, to try various kinds of functionality. And in fact, every day we've been getting great ideas from inside, from outside, from all, all around the world. And that's why we really want to involve all of you. Uh, I mean, this developer community is going to be key to us. And that's why today I'd like to announce uh, the Google Glass Explorer Edition, which is going to, be, uh, it's going to be something that we'd like to get in the hands of people who are really passionate about it, uh, who want to be among the earliest uh, to get this device. This is not going to be a consumer device in the sense, you know, it's going to be rough around the edges. You've got to be... Like, you really want to, you have to want to be on the bleeding edge. Uh, and that's what this is really designed for. Um, so uh, it's only available uh, for pre-order uh, here uh, at I.O. Um, it's, it's, I, I apologize, it's right now it's only for US-based I.O. attendees. It's just a bunch of regulatory stuff that we have to get through. And uh, uh, so, you know, we'll try to broaden the base over time. We're just, we're trying to get it out to people as early as we can so we can get that feedback. Uh, it will be uh, $1,500, and we're going to ship it to, uh, we plan on shipping to early next year. Um, I know this is uh, a lot of things we discussed here, like, you know, you can get MMP and whatnot. This is a really new technology, and uh, we really want to get all of you to help shape it. And uh, that's why we really want to get it out into the, the hands of passionate people as early as possible. So uh, by the way, you can get that. There's going to be a booth set up. It's just going to be outside on your right. And you can stop by there anytime today or uh, tomorrow during the conference. Uh, right now, we're only accepting orders at the conference. So um, this is not, as I said, a mass consumer order. And uh, do, 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 what? I have some cleanup I have to do. So I apologize also, I, uh, I kind of uh, interrupted Vic's presentation. So um, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I want to thank Isabel and Babak so much for presenting up here, and another round of applause for all the people who brought this together. Uh, and uh, Please, let's see. Is Vic ready? Vic, I'm so sorry. But thank you all very much. We're going to see you around the conference. See you around the booths. That's, good. That's right. Thank you. Of all the things when I woke up this morning I wasn't expecting was that I was going to have a Taylor Swift moment. But uh, <laughs> thanks, Sergey. You know, Larry, uh, our other co-founder, has a very famous saying at Google. Uh, he says you should have a healthy disrespect for the impossible. And I think what Sergey just showed you is an example of that. Uh, you, when your boss comes to you and says, hey, we're going to jump out of an airplane, we're going to land on the roof of Moscone, and then we're going to bike it in, you must be working at Google. <laughs> and so uh, it was really exciting to see something that magical. Let me just wrap up on events, and uh, I've got some final announcements to make. Um, as we were, in fact, the best way to wrap up on events is let's just go to that video and I'll make a final comment after that. Let's play the video. Low and so gung ho for anything to get me to start. I had my rock, I had my roll, but I couldn't find the spark. I flipped by the hot fire, a glimpse of the good life, and the clouds began to fade. I'm turning this beast side around to a
You know, when you think about what we're really trying to do with Google Plus events for before, during, and after, it really speaks to what we're trying to do with Google overall. You know, the best thing is for computers to have your back, and then you don't have to worry about them. You can focus on what makes people the happiest, on living and on loving, and not messing with annoying computers. With Google Plus events, all you have to do is show up at your event, hang out with your friends, take some photos, and we think that's a plus. So we're super excited. Now, we thought the best way to kick Google Plus events off is to have our first official event tonight, and you're going to be invited. That event tonight is an after hours party, and that will become the first official Google Plus event. We have Train and Paul Oakenfold available tonight. It's going to be fun, lots of food, lots of other entertainment. I've just got to ask for you please download the new Android version available in Google Play later today. That version will uh, have all the events integration, and you'll be able to turn on party mode. I'm going to go backstage in a few minutes and send all of you invites. And so expect an invite uh, from me. We'll see how many contributing photographers we can get tonight um, at the party. OK, I believe, uh, one more thing. That's right. Uh, Hugo, can you join me on stage? Thank you, Hugo. Okay. I think you have some exciting news for these folks. Uh, I do indeed. Well, because you guys are our most dedicated developers, we think it's really important for you to be able to experiment early with all the stuff you saw here today. All of your devices and your media working together. So we've put together for you an Android developer pack. All 6,000 of you are going to be walking away today with a brand new Galaxy Nexus phone. And a brand new Nexus 7 tablet. You're going to get. You're going to get the uh, latest OTA of the uh, Jelly Bean Preview version uh, a couple of hours after you power them on. Should I keep going? One more. OK. Well, you're also going to be the very first ones to get your hands on a shiny new So thank you to the generosity of the Android team. Thank you all for your support. Please don't run out uh, and get these devices. They will be available today at 4 p.m. onwards on the ground floor at Gear Pickup. You must have both your badge and an ID with you. So please, if you're standing in line, make sure you have your ID with you and you can pick them up. Once again, thank you. We'll see all of you tonight at the after party. Jumpers in five, four, three, two, one. This is awesome. 